So let's try and understand what goes on as we construct the tree or as the method constructs the tree. Okay, so consider what's going on at this node. So at this node, the branch is on income, right? So what it does is it takes, at the root node, we've got all the cases available. So what the method is doing is taking all the cases available and dividing them into two parts. Those which have income less than or equal to 95 and those that have income greater than 95. Okay, so it's a partitioning of all the cases into two sets. Now, what are the cases which come to this node? Clearly, from the tree, the cases that reach this node are those that have income greater than 92.5. Okay, so what this node in turn is doing is it's taking all the cases which reach the node, namely those with income greater than 92.5, and then partitioning them into two sets based on education. If education less than or equal to 1.5, it goes into one set. If education greater than or equal to 1.5, it goes greater than 1.5, it goes into the other set, and so on. Okay, so this is the partitioning process that's going on at every node. The base cases that reach the node are divided into two parts based on some criterion. Okay, so each decision node partitions its base cases into two sets based on some criterion. Okay, effectively, if you look at it, so then what has happened is we took all the cases that reached the root node and divided them into a bunch of sets which reach this uh, uh, leaf node, this leaf node, this leaf node, etc. So effectively, what has happened is we have taken the cases, all the cases available to us and divided them into seven different sets, the roots, right? So each leaf node represents one set of cases that uh, arrived at the root node, right? So let's say there were 100 cases here. They're broken up into seven different sets. And of course, the numbers of cases in each of these sets would have to total to 100, okay? So uh, essentially, you can think of it like this. You've got all the cases that is broken up into a number of parts. I have not shown all the seven sets here. It's broken up like that, seven disjoint sets. So let's take a closer look at this with an example that we borrow from the book by Shmurli, Bruce and Patel on uh, data mining for business intelligence. Okay, so the example consists of data about a number of households. For every household, we've got the income and the lot size. And we also have information on whether the household owns a riding lawnmower or not. Okay, so clearly ownership of the riding lawnmower is our target attribute. That is given the income and lot size for a new household, we would like to predict whether they will buy a riding mower or not buy a riding mower. Okay, so we are trying to classify into buyer, non-buyer, or in this case, owner, non-owner. Okay, so the dark circles represent owners and the, un the light circles or the unfilled circles represent non-owners. Okay, so, uh, what we are trying to do now is to arrive at a set of rules that will classify the cases into owner or non-owner. Now, if you construct the tree for this, it could turn out that the first partitioning happens at the lot size of 19. Okay, All the cases less than or equal to 19 go to one side and all the cases greater than 19 go to the other side. Okay, so you can see that the, that the partitioning at the root node, the root node consists of all the cases, and the partitioning at the root node divides the cases into two parts, those which have lot size less than or equal to 19, and those which have lot size greater than 19. Okay, so that's what's going on in this case, and that's what this division represents. Okay, so it's divided into two parts. Now, what you can see as a result of this is that each of these parts is more pure than the original. In the original, we had equal numbers of owners and non-owners. Okay, it was a very impure node, the root node. Now, if you look at each of these two nodes uh, separately, the bottom node here and the top node here, if you look at them separately, they represent much more pure nodes in the sense that they consist more of one type of case than the other. This is predominantly non-owner and this is predominantly owner. Okay, so now we could have a rule. Of course, it's not the complete rule yet. We could have a rule at this point saying, if the income is less than or equal to 19, 
classify it as a non-owner and if the income is greater than 19 classify it as an owner okay though we see that the rule will perform pretty well it won't have too many mistakes right so you'll have only three mistakes in the bottom node and you'll have about in fact three mistakes in the top node okay so we've got much purer nodes as a result of this partitioning now what we are trying to do as a result of this partitioning in fact let's just jump back to the previous slide is we want to have all of these cases satisfying rule one rule two etc each one to have predominantly i cases of just one class okay in fact uh, it might not be possible to get all of them to have cases of exactly one class but we want them to be predominantly one class and then you can say under this if this rule is satisfied then classify it as owner if that rule is satisfied classify it as non-owner etc so the idea is to create a set of cases right create sets of cases which are close to being pure that is consist of only one type of node that's what we are trying to do here okay so what do we mean by a good partitioning decision as we've already discussed, in this node, owners predominate. In this node, non-owners predominate, which is much better than the equal mix that we had originally. Okay. Now, if, since it's got only two dimensions, we were able to show it visually. If it has three dimensions, you know, if your input has three dimensions, which is three predictor attributes, then the division, each division is dividing it into a three-dimensional region. Earlier, each division was dividing it into a two-dimensional region because the original region was two-dimensional. Okay, but other than that, it's pretty much the same process that's going on. Okay, so this process is called recursive partitioning because what we are going to do now is to take each of the two regions and recursively divide them again and again until we have a bunch of cases where each region is as pure as we can get it okay so the next thing is going to do is we select a partition of the two right you know we'll see later on how exactly to select the partition and then we select a, an attribute on which to divide that partition okay so here we figured out that it's a good idea to divide this partition on income income uh, you know greater than uh, this looks like 85 or so okay income greater than or equal to 85 income less than 85 so once again, now you see that this region is pure. It has only owners. And this region is almost pure. It has just one non-owner. Okay. So once again, by dividing it, we created two regions that were individually a lot purer than the original region that we started with. Okay. So this represents a division uh, at income of 84.75. Less than or equal to 84.75 is all here greater than 84.75 are here okay so now initially we started with an overall region consisting of equal numbers of owners and non-owners now we've got three regions this region predominantly is owners this region tremendously predominantly is non-owners and this region has only owners it's completely pure okay so now we have three no three nodes or three collections of cases which are much purer than the original now it's your turn look at the diagram and see where you might want to place the next partition in other words which region would you partition of the three available regions which one would you partition and where would you place the partitioning line again remember the goal is to take an impure node and create two nodes which are much much purer than the original think about it a little bit there's no big right or wrong answer here just to show the intuition of what you might want to do. Okay, I assume you paused the video and then you took a stab at it. It's possible that we might want to place a line here. Right, so what this is going to do is to create this region which is almost completely pure and then another region which is almost pure once again, you know, one owner and two non-owners. Alternately, you might place a line here, right? In that case, what you get is one completely pure region and another region which is, uh, you know, iffy. It's four and three. Okay, not all that pure. 
or alternately you might place a line right here and you might get one very pure region and one not so pure region. So there are many different options. How do you choose? That's the key point. Okay, uh, we'll come to that shortly. So the whole point is that every time you're going to do a, what you're going to do is not you, but what the program is going to do is to select a region and identify where to cut that region. In first of all, which variable to cut on, the income or lot size, and at what value to cut, so that you produce two regions which are much more pure than the original that it started with. This is the idea. Okay, so where would you place the next partition? We've already talked about that. So now, what the whole process is that you keep doing this. Keep on chopping till we get as homogeneous a set of partitions as possible. Obviously, perfection may not be possible. You may not be able to find a set of partitions that divides, that creates completely pure regions. Your data may be such that that is not possible. Okay, so the idea is to keep on chopping, 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 chopping till you get regions which are as pure as we can make them. So let's look at the procedure used to grow the trees. Now, what I'm going to explain might look a little bit complicated. You don't need to know this because the computer program is going to take care of all these details. It might be a good idea for you to just have a broad overview. So the way it works is first you put all the training cases into one set. Okay, that's like the initial set of points we have. Then we select an impure set to partition. Of course, initially that's the overall set, but later on we might be, you know, there, there could be several sets and we'll choose one of them. So you select any one of the sets that's impure and you're going to partition that set. So then consider all possible partitions of this set. Okay, so let's say there are two attributes. You can partition so many different ways on one attribute and so many different ways on the other attributes. That's a set of all partitions of that chosen set. Okay, now from that you select the so-called best partitioning. And very shortly we'll discuss what do we mean by best, right? So you select that partition that provides the most pure regions, uh, the most pure two resulting regions. Now check, have we got a set of regions which are as pure as we can possibly make them? If that is true, we stop. Otherwise, we go back, select yet another impure set from all the sets we have, partition it and continue this process. Okay, again, like I said, you don't need to memorize this, but this is what the computer program actually does to build the tree. Now, earlier we spoke about what do you mean by a pure set? Okay, what do we mean by the purity of a set? There are two measures. One measure is called the Gini index. And let's say there are M cases. M is the number of cases. So for example, if you're talking about buyer, non-buyer, that is two cases. M is two because uh, two classes, I'm sorry. M is two because there are two classes, the class of buyers and the class of non-buyers. Okay, so M is the number of classes we have in our target attribute. And PK is the proportion of elements in class K. Right. So let's say we've got all the cases to begin with. And let's say there are 16 buyers and 16 non-buyers. OK, so the proportion of buyers is 0.5. The proportion of non-buyers is 0.5. So P1 is 0.5, P2 is 0.5, or P buyer is 0.5 and P non-buyer is 0.5. Or suppose you had 75% buyers and 25% non-buyers, right? Then P buyer is 0.75 and P non-buyer is 0.25, okay? So you've got a set of cases which has two classes, buyer, non-buyer, and we have a certain proportion of each class. Given this, we calculate the Gini index, okay? So suppose we have P1 and P2 as 0.5 and 2 is the number of classes. The Gini index is calculated as 1 minus sigma i equal to 1 to m, sigma k equals 1 to m pk square. Okay, so for the above case, that would mean we'll show the calculation on the next slide. And Gini index of x can take values from 0 up to m minus 1 by m. So if you have two classes, the Gini index can vary from 0 
to half m minus 1 being 1 m is 2 so 0 to half if you have three classes it can go from 0 to 2 thirds and so on let's calculate the Gini index for this example so you've got two classes owners and non-owners p1 is 0.5 because you've got 12 owners out of 24 p2 is also 0.5 you've got 12 non-owners out of 24 okay so we can apply this formula and we get 1 minus 0 0.5 the whole square plus 0 0.5 the whole square okay so this is 0.25 this is 0.25 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0.5 okay so in this case the Gini index is 0 